All right, I just spoke with Larry. He doesn't have one of those missing pieces as well. And also he forgot today was the day he actually supposed to have family time with his kids. So he's got to take him to Napa to the grandma's house. So we won't be getting together, um, I guess anytime soon. So I'm on my own on this uh, trunk one. So hopefully we'll get that all done today as well. So today is a nice Tuesday or Monday, Monday now, the 25th of November. Um, we lost one of these, but I think I'll just I have an appointment at the service center, so I'll just ask them for one. I'm sure they'll have plenty. So that's about it. So we'll just go ahead and get those wires in there nice and neat. And this gives me a chance to actually um, move some of my recording because it's such a huge file. Let's see if I can pull this. I guess maybe it'd be better underneath, right? Yeah, it looks way better underneath. There we go. Kind of, it's kind of tucked it right there. You can see how it lines up. I even go a little bit further if you want to. Maybe behind the bolt. There we go. That way I keep it staying there. You can see that I kind of squeeze it underneath the bolt. So you can see it. See that? Just kind of lift this up a little bit. These are like the hard rubber eyes. There you go. Then that's it. Uh, get these guys back to where they were. Yeah, we'll just ask him for one of these little missing pulls. So, and then this one will probably wrap it neatly underneath this and maybe, I guess maybe tie strap it with the rest of these guys here. You don't want to go underneath because it might be hot. Like I said, again, these little, you know, ceramic or aluminum manifold stuff. Who knows what they are? Um, my, your guess is as good as mine. Look like some coolant system. And this one, we could have done the same thing here. Uh, let's see. Is there a path where it can drip? Actually, this is for the windshield, huh? It goes like that. And how's ours wrap? No, oh, ours is even better. It goes right underneath it, so we don't have to worry. It goes straight underneath it already. So we got that there. We got it plugged in. So let's just gonna get that one neatly tied in. So let me go ahead and do that one right here. Set this down. You can see me do a little bit of magic routing here. It's not really magic. It's just <laughs> labor intense. Uh... When you're stiff in the morning, everything's labor intense, which is doesn't have to be. Nice, nice view right there. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and see how we're gonna route this. Yeah, too bad, it's unfortunate, it fell underneath there. Nothing I could do. I could chase my tail trying to find it. I bet you anything I'd drive for a while, but I won't have this cop part anymore, so I probably won't be able to get it. Hopefully it falls to the side, because there's gaps underneath this front frame, underneath the whole um, front. Uh, plastic where it could probably slide back out of the wheel area, which is good. I just don't like things that hang out where they're not supposed to. Okay, what I can do is I could plug it in first and then reverse engineer it. You can see here I'm already close to it. So let me go ahead and plug it in first. It's pretty clean as we see it already, straight shot, right? Like that right there. Nothing else to really hold it. So let's go ahead and put this guy underneath here. Then we can reverse lock it down in place. Yep, yep, yep. Just snaps on. Pretty simple. There we go. Nice and snug. Okay, now we can worry about tightening it down how we like it. We might bundle it near here. We might not. Let's see. Let's see what's the best route. I want to make sure you guys get the best angle first. It's going down slowly but surely. Okay, so we can route it here or we can actually keep it above. I kind of might like it above. That way there's no wires going crisscross back. I want to go maybe straight shot like this. So in fact, I might even want to bundle it up and tie it right here to keep it maybe just like have it right here actually. So let's see. Let's see how we can do this where we can hide the wires so it's coming straight yeah I might even like it to have it like right here you know what I mean it doesn't have to be coming forward so I might want to bundle there just all in your preference and then maybe tie strap a few here and there and just go straight right in that looks clean I think that looks superb so we'll do that right there so let me go get a medium tie strap get all my bolts here Yeah, a couple. Looks like we're gonna be doing quite a few of them. 
Okay, so the first one we're going to do is this one right here. You guys can still see it. I haven't tilted all the way down yet. Yeah, you guys can barely see it, but let me try to angle it up. Okay. So the first one we'll do is right here. We'll tie it. Try to get my perfect number eight again. Or sort of. Let's see where the, all the loops are. If you do it perfectly in circles, it actually you can twist it later on for a number eight, which that's why I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah, it feels so much more better like like right there. I mean I can even tie it up here like this, but I got a feeling we're gonna shift it a little bit. So let's just do it. get back to my perfect number eight sort of it's not too crisscross oh. there we go then this could probably be stay here if I tighten these well everything should fall into place so let me go get the cutter for it Got a few more of the medium tie straps in my pocket. Just to make sure. So these were the intimidating wires. It doesn't seem too bad now. Especially when we single them out, break them one by one, they don't look too intimidating. Start cutting some of the other ones too, but I'll show you when I get there. Okay. And this one right here. You can see it fell. You see that one right there that fell? That one looks like it could be poked somewhere. It might be here, maybe. Yeah, let's see. There we go. Might just fell loose. Probably from the factory. That's what I'll tell them. I'll tell them those buttons just fell loose. Maybe they'll just give me a replacement. <laughs> okay. So we got that one there. Okay, so we're gonna tidy up right here, this one. This is air back, so I know it's not gonna get heat. The only thing I'm concerned about is just put one right here, then one, one crisscross, and we'll make it all the way. Very, very nice. I'm not going to tighten all the way down yet, that way I can stretch it the way I want it. But I will start patterning it down now. It's like a... Like a poor cut of electrical tape. I'm going to finish it up. Then maybe I'll use this to tighten it down. Almost. We're not yet. How many more? It's the pocket stretch. There we go. Looks so much nicer. One more here, I guess. That should do it. Enough slack. anything all right now we can now we can tighten it down <sighs> all right one more maybe right here looks so much more cleaner Again, as we do more of these, we'll probably get better and better understanding what works best. But so far, I 
think this is just as good as anything. There we go. This will stay here. This is fine. It's above all engine parts, which I'm which I'm pleased to know. It's not gonna create any trouble. Now we can tighten it down. Okay, see how it curves? Things beautiful. Alright, so we got that there. That wasn't hard, right? So now it's time to trim them all. One by one. We gotta bring a positive wire too, so that's fine. This is what we need to do anyway for these guys. So these will be separate. <sighs> Done. Very, very nice. Okay. So now, oh, we're gonna go and cut these guys here too now. Our We're about to run some more of these wires, so we gotta cut these guys. These guys are ready to be cut. I'm surprised that they're, like, again, there's only one gray one, so I thought there was gonna be two of them that goes in there, but I guess not. So, what I could do is go ahead and maybe there's another gray one here. No, that's the white one. So, we can plug them all in the unit and back run it, sort of reverse engineer it. So, we got these, these were the connector, this one's for the speaker. So it's getting there. <clears throat> we oh we haven't connected our power line yet. So let's go ahead and I'm not sure how far our power line is gonna go back to these guys or they're actually gonna be up here as well only. So we may not have to worry about these guys yet. But anyway, let's go ahead and run them. We're gonna run them back to the base here. See the tips right here? So I'm gonna go and plug them in. So Wait, ahead of time, know where we're going. I don't like things crisscross, so you'll see me drag it out. There we go. It's not crisscross. Okay, good. This one here runs straight. Runs straight to the tip. This one's for the speaker. It'll say it buzzer, speaker. Should I call it a buzzer? Okay, and then this one is through the front signal plug which is right here state so we'll plug that in there see I didn't want to lock it down yet because I didn't know how much this bolt is gonna be in the way which is not so that's good okay the next one we'll tie that unit then later I'm not uh, that confident like Larry Lee where he just slaps it down and tie straps it right away or zip ties it because he's definitely done, did hundreds of these compared to myself it was unfortunate. We totally forgot, uh, Raymond. You can see that, that it can't go in the other slot, so you can't mess up. So if I try to put in a little thin one, it won't. It's almost like it has like a little pattern too, by the way. It's really like dummy proof. See that? It's like it, it can only go a certain, almost like a telephone jack. But it, uh, it has a little antenna peepee -pee looking like for it. See that? You can go only in a certain way. Like a little two prong. There you go. That was it. So we got there and saved this one for the speaker. The speaker might go underneath here. Who knows? I'm not sure. The speaker might go underneath here or underneath, underneath, underneath. So we might have to put it underneath. Just because there might be something that goes layer over here. And we fit the speaker in here and it's supposed to have the rubber here. We'll be in trouble. Because I'm not too exactly sure all that rubber housing, uh, what kind of tucks where and so forth. Uh, just kind of kicked on this one. So we're moving along quite nicely. And there is our power wire. And there is our speaker. We can attach the speaker now, just get an idea. And this has a little small adhesive area already. Just remember everywhere we need to put adhesive, we want to make sure we alcohol rub it just so it will stay down and it's nice if the temperature was a little warmer or hot 
because adhesive always works best on a hot surface. Okay, so I'm going to aim for the, the mounting of the speaker right there, which is perfect for me. You can see here the wires. Do that. I'm going to use that right there. Plug it in now. Only goes a certain direction, so you can't mix up the two. Even though it's black and white here, it's a different color, but it won't fit any other way. It has like a little safety notch. It's kind of nice. Like I said, dummy proof. Let me go and get some alcohol rub and proceed to clean it again, like we've been doing. I'm not sure if I used this to wax before. That might be the reason why it's slippery still. Uh, you might want to use this as a clean paper towel. But anyway, I think we're doing okay. I'm not sure the speaker has a thing for, it looks like they always have a little extra just in case you need to tie strap it for double check. So anyway, I'm just gonna put some rubbing alcohol. Just let it evaporate for about 30 seconds or a minute before you apply it directly. All right. Almost there. See a second there, I'm just gonna apply it right there. Just put it right underneath there. That's where my speaker's gonna go. Might not be the best spot, but you know what? It'll kind of silence it a little bit. Being so underneath the car. Well, not true. Because you have the horn that's really underneath the car. Again, they removed that horn somewhere else on the, I guess on the later model uh, factor, factory, the Tesla Model 3. Because before, if you get the earlier model, it would have had it right underneath there where we put the uh, motor. But, you know, it will be right, like right here. <laughs> they will put the horn right, right here above the motor, sort of right here mounted. But I don't have it. Not there. So it's routed somewhere around here. Yeah figure out another place to put it who knows all right all right everything's looking neat everything's coming along just nicely there's our buzzer now let's do a dry fit first before we actually see that everything always has like a little piece right here where you can actually put a safety just in case it decides to fall off and if it does fall off in this area it'll be a pain in the butt I'll be honest with you but I don't think so Again, I want to keep it away from any kind of a aluminum line. I'm not sure how hot they get, but just to be safe, you know? Actually, I'm not going to even stow it in here or something. I don't know. No, that would be kind of silly. be really hard to get hold of it if ever need to be. Some people just put it right on top of the battery so they can disconnect it anytime they want. And that might be a brilliant idea, actually. Just put it right here in the battery area. That way they can, they, they can disconnect it after they ever want to silence it I might just consider that really if I was to put it where where the battery is I can always unplug it you know what I mean yeah that would be a great idea why why do it the other way where you can unplug it yeah let's do that look if you put it here if you ever get irritated by the noise it makes all the time you can just unplug it from the surface instead of having to remove all this just to get to the motor part and you can, and once you unplug, you won't hear that noisy, that beep, 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 if it gets too annoying. So let's do that. Let's reroute this the most efficient way. Let's put the speaker on the battery. And there's enough slack here, which is perfect for it to put it on the battery instead. It's kind of really fun now. Um, at first I thought, you know, oh man, it's going to be breaking you just take a break intermittently you don't have to do this all in one straight you know hour or so you know do it 20 minutes take a break <laughs> you know come back when you're up for it you know if you don't have to you know need the car for a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and just place it on the battery because I don't think that anything's gonna really cover this where it blocks it I believe if I'm not mistaken because I don't think so because normally it would come all the way out here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull it out from here, right? And then tuck this guy in here. Oh, this looks fabulous. That's my new word now, fabulous. Okay, and you can see here it only goes one direction. Cannot put any other way. It has like a little notch there. 
Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, see, it can't go this way. It only go tubularly this way, which fits this objective. Oh boy, gotta be careful. This is my only indicating noise of where the programming is currently at. So yeah, we could put in the battery. Unfortunately, the battery's temporarily, right? It's only good for five years. So, hmm. Well, worst can worst, you can always reapply adhesive. It's not like it's gonna be a big deal. But let's, before we even, like, don't worry about it, let's just go ahead and tie it down. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep this wire kind of loosely. I'm not sure the battery gets hot. Does the battery get hot? I mean, I mean, it does have these insulating things, but again, my objective is to make sure these wires are off of the battery. So maybe it wasn't a good idea to put it on the battery. Maybe it just go over it. That way the frame kind of protects it. We can go like that. I was just trying to get the wires neatly underneath things and I didn't realize maybe we're dealing with another sensitive area. But I could put a tie strap right here. And that way we can always get to this beeper and disconnect it when we need it. So let me do that. Yeah, I'll do that. The buzzer. Yep. Medium tie strap should work for that one. So I guess you might want to get pick up a few medium tie strap for your own. So we'll just go ahead and tie strap. I want to do it in a way where it never touches the battery, sort of. I just have it hanging. I mean, right here is a pretty good safety bet. I'll go a little bit under because this guy here needs to ever pull out. The battery needs to latch off. You won't have to worry about disconnecting the wires, joining the two things together. Also a little bit for aesthetic. All right, that's not bad. That way, this connector is kind of protected a little bit right here. Not fully protected, but protected enough. There we go. We decide to. We can curl it up. Curl up in the way where it's. Or, well, we're mounting on the battery, so it must not be hot. So I, <laughs> I guess it's kind of contradicting what I'm trying to do to it. So if we mount it, the battery is not going to be hot, I assume. But yeah, we could put the speaker right there on the battery. We don't need to change out the battery when we'll take it off. Super. All right. So that was good. We won't nail it down yet, so. So I have some layaway here to play with. How are we gonna tie these together? I think we should start bundling up. I think we're pretty much done. We just gotta bring the power to it, really. So let me go and cut this guy right now. There we go. A little sharp. All right, so it's now it's time to go ahead and get the the power wires here, eight millimeter. Be careful when you're installing this one here. If it's open and it touches something, this part, you can short the fuse before you even get a chance to use it. So since it's already sealed nicely, see right there, it's not gonna easily short itself from here to there because it's a rubberized. Just make sure it's not exposing any kind of metal yet connecting. This thing might hit something. So a good safety measure if you want to, just to be double check. You can take out, it's a 20 amp fuse by the way, you can see it, it's 20 amp, you can take it out, these are, oh yeah, they're fun to take out, ah, you know what, just protect it, just put the cap over it, alright, so put the cap over it just in case it's, you know, anything small touches it and shorts to the ground, you're in trouble, it's just going to blow the fuse, it's not going to be that big a deal, but, you know, having to go and find a fuse so you can close this right now you probably want to close it while 
you have it in your hand like this better, easier, you get a little bit more easier leverage to work with. It's kind of nice to give you this one, not one of those cheap bulb fuses. These are nice quality inline fuse. And it even has a little water cap. Pretty cool. Give it a good squeeze just to make sure. All right, so we're ready to put this in. I believe it's still eight millimeter socket to open this area. We can almost tie this down yet, but I'm not, I'm not yet confident yet because there's still the back area that we need to tap into. But for right now, since we have it open, this area, let's go ahead and open this cap up for the positive terminal. Now this might be the eight millimeter. I knew there's gonna have to be eight millimeter somewhere. So here it goes. I think I don't think this is 10 millimeter. I think it's eight millimeter. So let's go and get that eight millimeter out because I believe the 10 millimeter won't fit. Speaking of my socket area, let's go find it. Okay, so you can see here, this is a 10 millimeter. If you put it in there like this, actually, <laughs> it is a 10 millimeter, even though it looks small. So I guess you really don't need an eight millimeter, but this is what would have been an eight millimeter right here. There, eight millimeter. And this one is a 10 millimeter. Uh, let's see if the eight millimeter also fits. Maybe this one's actually looser. No, so it's actually all 10 millimeter, we're good. So let's go and keep our idea that the only thing we need is a 10 millimeter socket. So be careful again, if you're using a wrench like this, and since it's metal, it can easily slap and connect to the negative shortly, prematurely. So you wanna make sure you can isolate your, your, your uh, wrench to not be away. All you need to use this gap a little bit. You don't need like crazy amount of opening. So almost. Almost, just a little bit more. There you go. Okay, and then you can go ahead and kind of figure out where you want it to. Do you want to stick up a little bit or you want to go flatten down? I'm not sure why, but I kind of like things flattened down. So I'm going to angle a little bit more down position. You can see there. Sorry, my hands were probably covering you guys. You can see there, I'm gonna angle a little bit more down there. This thing's like, it's hard because you actually have to either stay up, because it doesn't allow you to actually twist down. Let's see if I can twist down, there you go. That'll work. See, I kinda like it to flush, and I don't like things poking up. It doesn't need to be, really. Okay, so there you go, I feel comfortable now. I'm gonna go ahead and lock it down. With my 10 millimeter again, nothing's changed. So now we got our positive. Don't want to do it too hard again. These are still soft, sort of soft contact, you know. Just enough there where you can feel it. It's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's still good enough. You don't want to overdo it. Because over time, you keep on doing it and doing it, eventually it's gonna start wearing out the, the stress level. These guys here, they're like almost soft conducting aluminum of some sort, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then we're gonna go and we got that all ready now, right? So we're gonna go ahead and now start getting our the rest of our power wires here. You see, uh, the reason why I didn't want to tie strap this down yet is because we're gonna tie strap all this neatly eventually. But I want to see where this goes as well. So how much more of this guy needs to go backwards? This one, I don't think this goes anywhere other than stay in this position maybe, and then the ground block, which uh, we'll tap with the common ground right here. So let's do that. And then we'll drag it over. I love this little flex tripod. You guys can't see it right now, but I'll eventually uh, hopefully show it to you guys. It's easier to take videos, especially free at both hands, you know. That's the main idea. If I could have done it without it, I would. <laughs> but less stress. Okay, so here we go. And here's the power. This goes to your power right here that we um, already tapped. So we'll leave that for a second there and this one, this is our ground. So let me unravel the ground first. Let's just start where we're working on. I guess since Larry Lee is not in a hurry because we're not meeting up today, I guess I can take my time further. So I was rushing to try to make it over there to him, but I was going to actually willing to drive over there to up to Napa to visit him, but he said definitely it was more for 
the kids and time with grandma. So he has, he's occupied. Family's first, no question. <laughs> Even though he loves doing this stuff too. His wife just got chewed him up. <laughs> it's kind of cute. <laughs> his wife chewed him up for not remembering, uh, taking out the kids for the family get together. Uh, that's how us guys are sometimes. We don't keep track of dates, right? We just like, well, uh, is that important? We want to make sure we still are grounded. That's why I'm not married yet, but I've got a feeling that uh, that's pretty much what uh, the woman will put us in line with. All right, so here we go. All 10 millimeters, so you don't have to worry. Lefty Lucy. Uh, oh, I don't want to tap my any of this stuff here. So just loosen it up a little bit. It's weird. They have like a little a ground strip you can see there. I'll show you in a little bit once I loosen this. You don't have to loosen it that much. You see that little ground strip? Is that weird? It kind of hooks up a little bit. That's interesting. Let's see if I could just place it here. I can give you guys a really up close how to connect a ground block or how to connect your ground wire. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem too hard. Okay. Bring this little creepy guy up here. It says GND ground. Everything is pretty labeled too. They didn't really have to, but they did a nice job in labeling everything. Now, depending on how you want to do this, just teeth it in there. We can go like that. We can put in the middle. I think over here to the side is good enough. Okay, then we're gonna tighten it down. That was it. That was our ground. Simple as a, well, you know. Okay, righty tighty meaning clockwise 10 millimeter again like always yeah just just do enough torque there where you feel it or you're not breaking anything you know what I mean I mean these are you know they're light wires they're not gonna be that hard to keep in there and you know engines do vibrate but since this is not a combustion engine probably less vibration really so there it goes nice and snug you want to give it a tug just to make sure no loose ends your important is ground you don't realize that but everything will work still without ground sometimes because it has a negative, but ground helps you prevent from damage of your circuit. It needs a ground wire, the path the least resistant to escape if things go haywire. And sometimes it doesn't work without ground too, so. All right, so we got our ground there. And you can see here, we're almost feeding power to it. I'm so excited, we're almost there. We're like, like I said again, it's supposed to be 20 more minutes, right? So if I can keep less talking and more doing, you guys will probably see the end result. Okay, so I'm gonna unravel this. It is almost time. Shouldn't be unraveling things inside the engine bay here, where it used to be an engine, <laughs> or would have been an engine if it was a combustion. But, kind of be more careful next time. I was trying to say when your recording is more important, your viewers are more important than your uh, parts. Okay, so anyway, like you see how intimidating it is. You look at this, you get all wired up. No pun intended. Okay, so now here we go. We're going to put this in here. And you know what's funny? This is the same way. Look. It has that same kind of a, like a telephone slash TP or a little side antenna kind of deal. And it only goes a certain way. You see that? Again, what's great is I can pop it up. Oh, actually, it's adhesive. It's almost self-adhesive, so eventually it starts sucking up in zone. There it goes. Enough there. There you go. I hit click. We are good. There's a little piece of wire here. I'm not sure I did what that's for. This one's for our power, which we haven't even plugged yet, or did we? Oh, this is the front. Uh, front can. I'm not sure it was even used. Front can state signal. Okay, you can't mix the two. This one will not fit this one anyway. So don't think because, oh wait, maybe it should have gone here. No, it doesn't. It actually goes here. Pretty sure of it. Or else it would make it easier both for us. Okay. Once we get power to this guy here, our wires are pretty much live. Now the next thing to do is tighten them down. Now we before we can tighten it down, we can actually start, you know what I mean, testing it out. I think as long as there's no wire exposed, we should be good. I'm excited as you are. So let's go and I think this is it. This is the final plug-in before we tighten it down anyway. Are you guys ready? It's, it's like Frankenstein's gonna come alive. Just a little bit here. Okay, 
So here we go. This is it. This is the final. This is the final connection. The two together to complete the circuit, bringing power. Let's just recap what we have here. Bunch of wires, of course. All these wires here, we accounted for them all already. They were kind of like hard at first. If you ask me to tell me which wire goes which, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But if you actually did it, you'll see they can only fit a certain way to a certain space, to a certain area, and everything else is capped off. So, and you know what? I guess they got smart. They didn't give us the lighting wire anymore. So that must be the wire that uh, you see Larry Lee tape off. So I guess that one extra wire that says light is no longer given to us. So everything else has been pretty much accounted for, I believe. I mean, unless we're not supposed to plug in a certain thing, but everything we have to plug in. So I'm gonna untangle this just for sake of being neat. So let me go ahead and untangle this real quick. I don't really want to do it around my PPF, to be honest. Even though it's scratch proof, light scratch proof, not like serious scratch. So, like washing, marring stuff, that is not going to be a problem for it at all. Sun hits it, it pretty much self heals itself. This has like a urethane layer and stuff like that. So, it's really neat. Uh, if you guys can do it, do it. Especially when your car is fairly new and it doesn't have too much rock chips yet, it's totally worth the investment. Uh, just a peace of mind, you know, when you're driving out in the dirt road, especially country areas and stuff, especially, you know, out in the grapevines and stuff when we're going down to LA and stuff like that. Trucks, Mack trucks. Okay, enough talking. Let's go and plug this sucker in and do a final curtain call here. Are you ready? I'm not sure. Do I have to set anything else up or push anything? There's no, uh, there's one little small button to push, but other than that, now I want you to notice this because I'm going to not notice it either if I don't face it this way. Okay, give me one second here. Let me curve this bad, this bad boy here. There's a couple LEDs out there. You won't see them yet because they're not lighted up. They're right here. They're right here, I'm sorry. Okay, so once I plug this in, this monster might be live. So you guys ready? Oh, there you go. You see the light? See that bad boy light up? I have no idea what it means, but we'll find out. Anyway, you want to push this all the way in, okay? Make sure it's not crisscrossing anything. If it does, we haven't tied anything down, so we can go back and fix it. And you want to make sure this has no exposed metal where it can short and contact your negative prematurely. So you want to make sure you push it all the way in. It has like a little nice little shield there. So you can push much as you can in there it'll be great like this little extra shield helps a lot okay so how we're going to test this out is first of all hopefully the runaway chair stays oh my gosh we finally got to this point thank you okay make sure you get all your tools out anything laying on the sides or thing when you close your hood you don't want it to clamp on it anything that's not supposed to be visible clamp this is fine it's not like a damage anything it's just plastic light i think we um we had even well let's pull our switches out here this is might be the switch to reset it oh boy it's almost live okay you can see here it went jerking up a little bit because it has to go higher first before it to go lower so let's do this uh hope you're ready i don't think i have anything else to be concerned about right these latches are supposedly preset or maybe Okay, so what we gotta do is we gotta bring it down first. You can see here, it's struggling. So what you do is you reset it, bring it down, or somewhat, somewhat down. Okay, now. <laughs> this is where Larry Lee was telling me. This is the two, uh, two hour detour that he sometime mentioned. Okay, so let me go and get got to open the door but it looks pretty cool uh it didn't go all the way down so this is probably what he's talking about let's get this guy open let's open this one back probably roll down the window be easier to reach in i guess maybe can i yeah i can reach in like this oh if i reach <laughs> the monitor goes asleep i guess it's not dummy proof like me 
All right, hit the open button. Well, for sure, uh, you can see how it stopped there. It memorizes how far you want it up. That's when you hold and push the button down. So yeah, maybe it's the first try. Okay, let's go and we're gonna tell it to go all the way up for us. Okay, put my key down again. Okay. Hmm. Oh, what's going on? What's going on, what's going on? Everything pulled correctly? Or may I need to adjust this cable? This is probably the cable what he's talking about that we need to adjust. So we'll probably do that. I'm glad there's troubleshooting here. All right, so let's do this again. Goes up. And then push it. Now we want it to close. Huh. Interesting. All right, so this is where I'm kind of puzzled because I think this might be the latch issue and so forth. So everything's plugged in as far as I know, unless the motor's not behaving properly. The cables are not twisted to the point of no return. I was thinking of the DMV cables here. So maybe this is like a loose connection right here that we need to adjust backwards a little bit. Free up, that's why I didn't want to tighten this originally yet, but I think it's okay still. So we're gonna go ahead and try to, so maybe we can make it go all the way down. Oh no, this won't, this won't even push down. I think the reason why is because it's, um, you don't want to put your, don't ever want to play around with these things because they can snap and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So just be mindful of it. Should have it open. Yeah, see, I don't still feel it down. So, let me see if I can open it from here. <sighs> Opening is no problem. I think we do need to adjust it. So you're gonna need like an open wrench. Um, probably the same 10 millimeter open socket here to be able to get to it. And I believe we might actually even have to replace these. I'm not sure yet. Maybe this is probably what's causing it to not go all the way down. I'm not sure because they didn't give me any stubs. I think the package was pretty much it. That was it. So I don't think these would have been a problem. See, I could see these things you could twist in more like this. So they disappear pretty well. And they would go on here normally. Okay, let's just let's just try it again. Oh, nice. Maybe a few more times, right? So, it looks like we might have to get lower cuz it looks like it's not adjusting up. So, let's go ahead and push it up. And we'll work on the speed a little bit later. Um, you can see how much gap that is. Let's see. There's quite a bit of gap. And I don't know, it's gonna be affected too when we put the, the the front here too. So that might also add on some more stuff to it as well. So we'll, we'll adjust what we can. It should at least close properly without the plastic, I assume. Oh, nice and hot in here. Oh, we got someone turn on the heater. <laughs> Always good to have heated seats. All right. Okay, so must be playing with this leverage here. There you go. I guess the system needs to rethink the process. Hmm. And there it goes, it thinks it's locked. 
Yeah, this thing is locked. So we gotta actually take a little bit further down. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tune this up a little bit. Let me contact Larry Lee to see if he has any tips on having it, making a gap as far as where it is right now. Okay, it seems like we still have that gap. I haven't did any adjustment. I tried to get a hold of Larry, but he's probably out already. Um, also, Hanshaw, I left them a message. Uh, they're pretty much international. They're in China, so it's kind of hard to get a hold of those guys. But I found out that you can't actually close it back once you hit open. You can see here it's disabled. Uh, it won't let you push the closer here. I guess because it has that button already next to it, that when you're loading your stuff, which is pretty convenient, you just push that button again and it will close it. So more than likely, we're probably gonna play with some adjustments. So you normally would, you would tap this to close it after you're done putting your stuff in here, which it's okay, it makes sense. I think you could do it with the app. But I know the trunk one day manipulated where you can actually push open and close. So you can't close it from there. That's interesting. Then how would you close it if someone's loading stuff or, oh, you just tell them, hey, if you're loading stuff, push the button to close it back. You can't just leave this open, get into your car and come into the dash screen here and just hit the close button. I mean, it'll look cool. Maybe you can do that, I don't know, but I haven't seen it yet. See that, it's still disabled. So it's not like you can push that to close the trunk. So that's not gonna work for me. All right. So you can only close it through. So what I'm thinking we can adjust it's probably these two guys here, adjust it further down, or even tighten this first. We could try to maybe tighten this guy first here, maybe allow it to go sitting in. Before we adjust these bolts, we might actually want to adjust this one first. So we'll take a eight millimeter socket, uh, open one so we can actually get into it. A 10 millimeter, sorry. Let's see if I have one. With that, we can use a crescent wrench. But I'd rather get one that's perfectly sized. I think this might be it. 1313. 13. Nope. See, this one will work. 516. Try not. 10 millimeter. Come on. There it goes. That one. My old toolbox here. I need to repair my scooter. So, 10 millimeter, 8 millimeters are pretty common parts to me or tools. So, let's go ahead and adjust that little beam there. First, that's what we'll do first. I think when we actually loosen this bolt, it might adjust a little bit also. So that's probably what's causing it to not close entirely. It's just our luck. Some people actually close right there in the first try. I'm not sure, maybe these were preset for those people. Oh. oh, one size is 11, one size 10. So maybe this 11 millimeter. No, it's actually bigger. So this is the one I was thinking of adjusting but it's actually 12 millimeter or even higher, 13 maybe. So let's go and get that 13 back. A little bigger than 11, so both of these are. So it has to be at least a 12 or a 13. So let's go and bring those 10, 13 sockets. Doo -doo -doo. 13 right here, just in case it's smaller than 13, maybe a 12. Let's bring the other one to be a 12. There's a 12 and here's a 14. Just in case there is a 14. So we got 13, 12, 14. It's gotta be one of these numbers. Might be a 14 actually. All right. So here we go. First of all, we'll try the 13. Yeah, 13 seems to be fit right. Definitely way too big for the, the smaller version. But let's see if we can try 12. There we go. One size 12, one size 14. So 13 will fit in the bigger one. 12 will fit it perfectly as well. And 12 will fit this one as well. So these both are actually 12, even though they don't look like it. This one looks bigger. Things can fool you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this. We might actually need two 12s actually. One to prevent this from spinning. And the other one, because I believe this is loosening it. Yeah, see it's just spinning both. We don't want that. So we gotta hold down one. We might be able to hold one with 13, but I don't want to strip it. Let's see if I can find another 12. I might not bring in a 12. Not, we'll just have to use a crescent. Or, yeah, we have to have an open side one, that's the problem. We might have to just adjust this crescent to lock it down. So I have anything underneath here. I doubt it though. I don't think I carry that many. Twelves. Nope, eleven and eight. 
yeah just have to use a, a crescent crescent with our 12 don't want to strip it so we'll get the crescent here all right we haven't tidied this up yet because we're still in the process of doing a great job huh this over here that way you guys can follow my adjustment in fact I might be able to get the camera <laughs> to stay in here when the hood closes you guys can see what I can't well it probably gets dark so I might put the light mode on or something okay so we are adjusting Get this. This is the power cord for the recording. It's not going to add any value for you guys to see it. All right. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Well, I'm going to adjust this. Go to about 12. Kind of hold it in spot. Okay, so here we go. This is the 12. Kind of figure out if we need to get this cable tightened further. Is that the deal? Or what? So we're backing this out. So that means we're forcing the cable to be tighter. We're going to try to force this guy to kind of move in backwards a little bit more. So it can preset itself even further when it actually, the motor triggers it here I'm not sure I'll go a little bit further I'm not sure this is doing it okay so we got there now so I'm gonna stabilize this one as I'm moving this bolt in, in fact this is good for stabilizing we'll use this crescent for stabilizing this one's easier to see for moving okay we're going righty tidy bringing it in more Hopefully it's just that, huh? The second option to adjust it will be these two bolts here. And we can sort of push it down more, so that means the, the lever has to clear itself further in before it latches it in. But let's just see how this one goes. The adjustment here. This is where um, Larry Lee said it took him a couple hours at one point. And I said I couldn't believe it. enough all right you guys I'm gonna put this down while you guys are in there and let's see I'll open it back for you I'll see you guys in a little bit you guys can see this whole thing come to play back here let me try to go up a little bit so you guys can see the whole door sort of it's coming down okay I'm gonna push the button see you guys in a little bit it's probably resetting itself Or something. Something's not right. The mechanism is still not pulling accordingly, huh? Did I might have miscalculate where this should have been? I think we might have to reset it or something. So I'm gonna put my screwdriver here. Oh, actually, you wanna get a screwdriver, a Phillips, or something round more. 
shit, it needs to reset itself. That's not doing it. I'm gonna push it one more time or I'm gonna have to I probably have to reset this guy again. Pulling him down a little bit. Okay, so I guess I have to pull the hood halfway a little bit before it starts. I did not push it again. I see this open right now. I don't want to put my finger near it. I'm just going like this. There you go. I'm just preparing for it. And it doesn't. You know what? I think I might have to hold it down to program it. I didn't think about that. Ready? There we go. Hold. I think that's the programming mode. That's three beeps, maybe. Four beeps. Five beeps. And that's the fastest one, so I'm letting it go. That's not a problem. Uh oh. I think that might be too loose. It might be the other way around. So we'll back that up. We'll back that up in a second here. Go ahead and I'm gonna try to push the button to Okay, it's still not doing it, so I gotta adjust this some more then. Not sure what's going on here. Missed anything. Take out this oh, little piece of white. It worked before, it just doesn't latch properly. That's our challenge. So let me go ahead and adjust some more of this guy here. Maybe now it's too loose, perhaps? I thought it would be the other way around to tighten it, but I guess maybe it's too loose now. So let's see here. We can stabilize this guy here and back him up. Tightening it. All right, so we're, then we're going to do the opposite now. We're going to give this one more slack. Hold this guy back, and we're gonna tighten the other one down again now. <laughs> I 
am I tightening it? Oh boy. I think I'm tightening it. Uh, feels like it's coming off to the end though, that's the thing. Maybe it's not tightening it. Hmm. Yeah, it feels like it's more looser now. Alright, let's go ahead and get tightened in. I feel like this is just going going more looser. Damn, I got myself in a trap. Oh, there we go. Look how it's freely spinning. Okay. So I can't tell if this one needs to feed more or this needs to pull this guy more. Or maybe, maybe both. Okay, let's see if this is kind of uh, loose right now. Slow speed. Just gotta bring it down a little bit. Oh, oh done. <laughs> you guys saw it. Well, too bad you can't see it because I can't see it either. I think we did it. We got this to go in further. That's what it took. So here I'll show you here from outside point of view. That way you guys can see it. Okay. So we got it. So interesting, interesting. Um, so it just need to be a little looser. Now, when we put the case on, it doesn't guarantee it's gonna be flushed as well. So here we go, I'm gonna push the button. Oh, by the way, to reset it, I've been having trouble. What you do is you pull it down maybe about a foot, just a foot, okay, not all the way down. Just pull it down about a foot, let go all the way back. Okay, when you reset it for the first time starting it, you see me. Okay, so anyway, I pull it down a little bit. That's why you heard a little bit of my manual pull. But the minute I pushed it, Check this out. Look at this. Booyah! It's beautiful. Wow. Huh. Let's see if we can tighten down that cable and we should be all set. Now, we're gonna go ahead and open this guy here. And you'll see it open. I think this is the fastest speed I'm on, which is perfect for me. Look at that. Reaction, attraction. <laughs> okay, so it definitely needs all this slack here. I'm surprised and really kind of boggles me So I guess we didn't have to worry about these two. It was just this guy here. So that's it. Just tighten it down Well, at least you got an idea about how to troubleshoot it, huh? Oh, okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and tighten that area down Figure out how to tighten it down so far Seems like it's not wanting to stay down. That's a problem. All right. Wow, so all that slack it needs. Now we can't leave the bolt hanging like this, so we gotta bring this guy inward, but for some reason, I mean, I could keep this guy in here. Let's see if I can just hold him in place. Cause I need to, see that? The thing about it is I can't hold this guy. So I need to actually get a pair of pliers and actually vice grip this a little bit just to hold this cable here while I'd be able to twist this in or else this thing keeps from spinning this nut and just goes back and back more and that's not what we really want so we'll need some vice grips if you want to be really careful you can take a piece of your cloth and anything like that what we're doing is just trying to vice grip this area right here Thank goodness it's not like a fuel line or brake line. If it's a leak, then it's a different story. You just want to hold it in place while you tighten this down. I'm not trying to hold the bolt here. I'm trying to hold this actual whole cable because that's what's really causing it to spin freely. It's just twisting the cable around while this guy is not going backwards for us. So 
you ever use a Y screw before, give it to a, you know, a little bit like that, small enough. I just don't want to scrape anything. So you feel it pressured. Maybe it's too much pressure because of the, the cushion. There you go. Now it's not going anywhere. And then you can go ahead and take your 12 millimeter. And I believe it might be righty tidy or lefty loosey. See, we want to actually have this guy drive in, but he's, he's not driving in. Not yet, anyways. He's still spinning. That's the thing I'm trying to avoid. Having an actual cable spin. I can't believe this guy won't won't give in. Okay, see, it has little niches here you can probably grab. So let me just try to grab it. I try not to damage it, but... Oh, it's not grabbing hard enough. That's probably the reason. Okay, let's do it one more. We don't want the cable wires to spin. We just want the thread here. And it should have spin freely because it came off freely. Just don't see why it's giving us a hard time toward the end. It's like the last bolt, you know? Okay, let me give it a little bit more pressure then just in case it's going to spin again. Tighten it. There we go. So, let's see if I have control now. Oh, there we go. I have it. Alright, so we're going to dig it in. I believe it's righty. Uh, this is clockwise, I believe. Facing, yeah. So, righty tidy. We're going in. There we go. Just needs a little help to hold the cable line. Before we get all the way in. Now, we don't have to worry too much. Just keep it in there. Keep adjusting it. You can probably adjust it by hand right now. See, it's easy now. Sorry, my hand's covering. Uh, you can adjust it by hand before you can even twirl it. I think towards the end, it was like stuck on there. Okay, now this doesn't guarantee us yet still because we have to put the everything tidy down. Then we, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bolt anything yet. I'm just gonna do a dry fit again, meaning I'm not gonna bolt it down. That's pretty much it. I'm just gonna do a dry fit of the the housing plastic. There we go. It's tightening now. Just don't want this guy to come loose, that's all. That's our whole objective. Back here, let the cable spin freely. Well, it's fine. We'll just hold it. I don't think it was going anywhere anyway. Okay. There we go. See that? Don't leave a mark. Helps. Okay, so now what I want to do is let's go ahead and close this bad boy again and see if it's still nicely flushed. I guess the rubber thing you can put all the way in now. Uh, we'll find out, we'll find out for sure. All you do is just twist those all the way in. I thought there was a replacement cap, but I guess that's only for the front. I might got confused watching those videos. So I guess it doesn't come anything to replace these guys here. You just gotta twist them. Just gotta twist them like that. Okay, so, all right, let's go ahead and push that button again. Roll away. <laughs> yes! Nice, 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 nice. I think I always had a gap here. You know, fit and finish with Tesla. So it's not I can do here. It's not like you bring it. Oh, actually, could you? Oh, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll put a cover, but I'm pretty happy. You know? Uh, we'll go and put a cover on there on top, and then we we'll can tune it a little bit some more. It's just beautiful. You know, a good PPF place will actually lift up your emblem they won't just cut a little pad in here leaving especially white you definitely don't want to get anything like ppf there where the amateurs don't know how to actually take off the emblem so they can take off the emblem and then they just put clean ppf and then apply a brand new emblem if needed or they can reuse and put adhesive on this emblem again you can see they did a great job everything's rolled in i'm just really happy again shout out to um, protection film solution up there in audi fremont uh, ask for Albert if you can. He's the boss. Actually, he always says his customer is the boss. Okay, here it go. Open. Sweet. All right. So we can go ahead and you know tidy up the wires and then put the the shell on there, and then um, we'll do a, a dry testing again just to make sure everything's cool. Okay. So you can see the lights here. This is front. 
can. I have no idea. So now we can go ahead and tie strap that. I believe we can. We'll see. Uh, we'll leave that alone just in case we need to fiddle or something else. But uh, let's go ahead and tidy all these wires up, shall we? So now we got an idea of where things go and so forth. We can tidy it down. So let's do that. Who knows? Maybe that one little piece will all of a sudden appear. <laughs> That would be interesting. I could probably drive without it just for a little bit and see actually if I can vibrate it out of there. Maybe just come back around the block and like, voila! I just find it right there in the, the easy accessible reach. That would be a dream. That shouldn't be a big goal of mine, but <laughs> it would be nice. It would be nice. I just hate doing things incomplete, you know? Uh, but that's okay. I have a Tesla service appointment coming up soon. I'll just ask for that one. I'm sure they'll have plenty of those. Those are probably common parts that people replace. Okay, so let's go and tidy this up and make it look nice. This is probably the least, well, probably my fun part. Uh, getting everything squared away. You know, when you're done, like, you're setting up your computer and your desk and your office, and your know, final part is just like, you know what I mean? You built a monster computer, gaming computer, whatever. You got wires everywhere, and some are like wireless Bluetooth, but you still have a lot of wires. The tidying up part is the most fun part. You remember uh, computers back in the days have the, all those peripherals and stuff like that? Well, I would spend, I kid you not, I would probably spend half an hour just organizing those wires the way I wanted it to. Just so I can say, or feel good about myself. Uh, I probably do really slowly at a job site, but I probably really do good craftsmanship work uh, if I have the proper tools. All right, be careful these things are thin enough for you to cut them. So know if you're cutting the tie strap or zip tie, you call it, or the, the wires itself. And I am very careful. There we go. All cut. And now we're going to add some more zip ties to areas that we think we need to use. I think this, are, this one's going to be loose just in case it needs to, you know, wherever it needs to fit around the trunk. So I think it'll be fine. This one here, the power cord and everything, we're going to have to tie it down. So we're going to start raveling these cables here. And I know why uh, Larry Lee just grabs them by the bunch like a hair and just starts winding them. Uh, which <laughs> I can see why his reasoning. Uh, I think I could do that here as well. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. I just don't want to yank anything that's not supposed to be yanked, you know? Alright, I think I can go like this, somewhere where they're discreet, might have to go from the side a little bit, see where some of them are at. Okay, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to best route all these wires here. So bear with me, it's a maze a little bit. This is where uh, I get a little anal on wanting to make my wires the way I want it to. So. Separate all the wires so they don't bunch up together. I'm gonna ooh, <laughs> throw them to the side. Don't throw them too bad. I mean, I got PPF, thank goodness, but yeah, I'm sure with a little whiplash, it can might leave a little mark. So I, okay, so I could probably bundle this guy up here. You know what I mean? So they're so close to each other. But I gotta make sure because I'm routing it sort of backtrack. So I could probably bundle it here. I think probably right here would be best underneath underneath right here where we were probably gonna mount our speakers I'm not sure you can see it right here so sort of a, a backtrack way I think I'm gonna have to start tying it down and then bundling it up right underneath here all of it 
I think that's the best way. So let me do that. I'll start from bundling it here again where we were. All right, so there it goes. This is where I'm gonna start it. Or where I continue what I slap. I believe this one just takes the small one. I think we still have quite a few of these little small ones here laying out. So that's what I'll start with. Left. only have two pieces I can't find any more on the ground I kind of lost them as I went okay so let's start ship shaping these things to a little bit more nicer looking what's need to be what's got to be I just can't stand just shoving things you know Kind of like it so that way I can pick up where I last left. Also, it's a good way of learning where the wires are supposed to be at. Okay, here we go. I can just put one right here right now. Keeping the same direction. As long as you can get all the wires in the area you can just start zooming it in and then you can worry about sorting them on the layers according to your preference so you can stretch as well if you need to but I think these guys are good there we go one down how about that huh we only got maybe six seven more to go <laughs> alright let's get one more small one all right so we're coming along we're working our way of wrapping 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 around I'm not even sure we need to bundle this here or there might be best to bundle it somewhere around here too I was thinking of going all the way underneath there but I think I just don't want to have this containment all right so there you go I'll put one in this way corner here you guys can see right there so if I can grab it all the way down this level low feel bad for someone who's gonna work on my car later on they're there and need to reach these wires to pull them apart they're like why is all these wires bundled together this is not factory <laughs> all right so let's do this the last of the small ones, that's okay because I think we're going to start getting to the big medium sized tie strap soon. This is the last of the small ones, so I think it's perfect. It's like teeth floss. There we go. Kind of get a feel for it first before I narrow it down. <laughs> 